Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to work out a simple mixture problem. And if you've been in previous math courses like intermediate algebra or even uh, preparatory algebra, uh, these are very common problems that we do in algebra. Here in tech math, uh, we're going to apply this more to a technical type of situation. And this is very common uh, out there. And you'll see some of these applications as you go into industry. So let's look at the situation that we have here. We've got a chemist. He needs 30 gallons of a 45% acid solution. The stockroom that he goes to to get his chemicals from only has containers of 20% and 50% acid solutions to select from. So how many gallons of each solution must be mixed together in order to produce what the chemist needs? And this is a pretty common occurrence. You know, you need a certain strength of a product, uh, typically an acid, and when you go to get it, uh, they don't stock every percentage strong solution out there. You have to mix it in order to get what you want. So this is a pretty common problem that we have out here. And by the way, this problem is uh, very similar to like an antifreeze problem where you're mixing uh, ethylene glycol or what we commonly call antifreeze for your car or your tractor or whatever. You're mixing that with water to get a certain percentage strong solution of antifreeze so that your vehicle, number one, doesn't freeze in the winter, and also that the uh, mixture in your radiator doesn't boil over in the summer, and that's typically a 50% strong solution of ethylene glycol. So uh, this is a very common kind of situation. Now keep in mind, these solutions are water with acid added to them. So when you have a 50% strong acid, that's 50% water, and 50% pure acid. If it's 20% strong, it has 20% acid, and the balance of that or 80% of its water. So no matter how big the container is, that mixture, you assume it's mixed thoroughly, it's homogeneous, you're assuming that that acid is mixed uniformly throughout the water, therefore you always get, for example, an 80-20 mix or a 50-50 mix, no matter where you pour out of the container. So those are some assumptions that we have to make. So how are we going to go about solving this problem? Well, uh, there's a pretty much a standard routine that we use to, to solve these kind of problems. And what we do is uh, we normally start with a diagram. And as you guys know, that's uh, normally a pretty good thing to do, start with a diagram. So here's a container of 20% strong solution. And I'm going to have to add to that uh, some amount of 50% strong solution. And when I'm done, I'm going to wind up with what I'm looking for, what the chemist wants, which is a 45% strong solution. And we know we're going to get 30 gallons of that. That's what he's looking for, is 30 gallons of that material. So I don't know how much of each of the other two he's adding together. So those are unknowns. So let's assign X, which we always do in a word problem. Let's assign it to one of them. And I arbitrarily picked the 20% strong solution. So I know he's going to put in some number, and we'll let X hold that place for now. Now, how much of the other one has to be added if I add X of the 20%? Well, there's only 30 gallons total here to work with. So let's say I assume I was going to put 10 gallons of the 20% in. Let's say that was the right number. Well, all that's left to put in for the 50% is 30 minus the 10 or 20 gallons. So the amount of the 50% or the other can be nothing other than 30 minus X gallons. Now keep in mind, these values up here at the top are going to change based on how much the how much of the final material we want. So this is unique. This is a unique setup to this particular problem, although this particular problem is not all that unique uh, when we work on it. OK, so let's, uh, let's see what else we can do here. Uh, when I've got this 20% strong solution, I've got acid in here. And if I could boil off the water, all that acid would be sitting at the bottom in the 50%. I've got half of this is acid. If I boiled off the water, the bottom part would be, uh, if I boil off the water, the bottom part would be acid. And in my final solution, I'm going to want about 45% of acid uh, mixed in with the water. So one of the things I know is exactly how much acid there is in the final solution. 
and how much water there is. So we're going to stick with the acid because we already have the percentages for the acid. We could use the percentage of water, but we already know that, that uh, what the strengths are, so we already know what the amount of acids are. So if I, if I do a little, uh, a little bit of a diagram here, I can figure out how much acid is in each of these. So the amount of acid in each of these can be determined. And for 20%, we said 20% of the total in that container is acid, so that would be 0.2 times x, 0.2 being the decimal equivalent of 20%. For the 50% strong, for our condition, that would be 50% or 0.5 times however much of that material that I use. And of course, in the final, we know that's 0.45 times the 30 gallons. We know exactly how much acid is in the final. We can figure that out if we wanted to for each of the other two. If I add the amount of acid that we said was floating around in those two containers, if I add it together, the only thing it can be is whatever's in the final container because that acid is conserved. So it's pretty easy to get to a final answer here by solving this pretty simple equation. And I'm not going to I'm not going to do all the algebra for that. You guys should already know how to do that from chapter 1, the beginning of chapter 1. But when I solve that out, I get x equals 5 gallons. And that is the 20% solution. 20% solution. So I know I'm going to need to use 5 gallons and 30 minus x would be 25 gallons of the 50% solution. 50% solution. So there's our answers right there. 5 gallons of the 20% and 25 gallons of the 50%. And again, that was based on looking at how much of what we sometimes call the concentrate that's inside of a solution. So for if you're going to do a antifreeze problem, you would look at how strong the solution of antifreeze is in. Maybe it's 40% antifreeze, uh, and the rest of that, of course, would be water. You would conserve the antifreeze, the actual concentrated ethylene glycol. That's what you'd be looking at. In this case, we're looking at acid. It could be any kind of acid, nitric acid or whatever. And that's how we look at these problems. Again, there's the equation. There's the equation that models this exact situation. Not good for any other situation, but it works for this one. This general method I just went over will basically solve most open container type of mixture problems. Now sometimes there's problems where you have a constraint like a radiator only, only has so much space in it and you have to drain some material out. That's, that process is similar to this but a little bit different. We're not going to cover that in this short video. So that's a simple solution to a simple mixture problem that can be applied to a lot of different problems out there regarding mixtures. Hopefully this will help you through some problems.